Hello and welcome to the channel where we talk about all things Notion for business. So in this video, I'll be walking through a new budget and finances template, which will let you track things like revenue, expenses, create monthly reports, set yourself financial targets. And it's also going to let you track things like recurring expenses and revenue items. So let's take a closer look at this new template system. So the key areas of this template system will be revenue, expenses, targets, runway and reports. We also then have a folder to store any old and archived monthly reports. And we have a section for our recurring revenue and recurring expense items. So let's take a quick look at this home dashboard, which is where we're starting. You'll see there's, there are two kind of call out boxes bringing to your attention any upcoming and overdue revenue items. And the same thing for upcoming and overdue expenses. You'll also notice a few of these click through guides, which are marked with this orange click icon. And these are just quick tutorials that are going to be showing you how to do things throughout this template system workspace. But for our uh, upcoming and overdue items, this is automatically filtered and we can go in here and see this to, sh to only show items where the schedule, which is a pre configured formula is upcoming or overdue. So if I move this brand project over here, we, uh, we requested payment from our client and they went ahead and paid it. It's disappeared from our kind of filtered view on the home dashboard because we're really just trying to focus on things that are upcoming and overdue. So let's take a look into our revenue uh, table and we'll see that our brand project, which we just marked as paid is still here. It's still in the system. It's just not showing on our home dashboard. So our revenue page, our revenue workspace has a few different views pre-configured for us. We have just a full list of our all time revenue. So all the revenue items that we create will be stored in here. And we have some properties to fill out for each new revenue item. I'm just going to check as I thought this wasn't set as default. Now this is our default so that when I create a new revenue item, we can go through this together and I'll show you how you might add a new revenue item with all of the relevant properties filled in. So let's say we just signed a new client and it was, let's do something different. Let's say it's a design project. Uh, maybe you're a freelancer working as a graphic designer and it's a new design project and we're about to invoice our client. Let's just say hundred percent upfront. So we have quantity of the items build is just one. We have the one project we're working on. Let's give it a rate. Let's say it's 2,500 by default. You'll notice some of these things are already filling out and um, they may not be correct. So the total should be correct because that's just calculating the quantity multiplied by the rate. But the schedule is going to update as we update a couple of properties, status and the due date. So let's say that we have already requested payment for this. And we're going to set the due date or the target due date for this to be, let's say next Friday. So we can see automatically this schedule formula has updated and it's going to say that it is an upcoming payment. And actually, if we head back to the home dashboard, we should see it on our, on our uh, filtered view. So we have this new design project is an upcoming requested payment for $2,500. If I were to change the status of that payment, um, to paid, we would see this automatically update. And if I were to keep it as requested, but let's say it was due yesterday, you can see that this schedule, uh, formula also shows that, Hey, this is overdue right now. So let's just keep this as requested for next Friday and we can add, we can tag it to a certain, you know, revenue category. Let's say this is a services project. This is a client project that we're working on. So we can tag it with the relevant category. We can also select certain items such as retainers as recurring revenue, or perhaps if you have uh, Stripe or another payments platform where you're getting a regular or consistent payout and you have a regular schedule for that, you could also set that as recurring and any items that we set as recurring will show up in our recurring revenue items list in our menu. We also have a, a section to link specific items to targets, which we're going to show how you can create in this system as well. So we just added this new design project. It is a services project and it's the payment is due next Friday. 
we could add this to one of our existing targets, which might be a revenue target. So if we add this to our revenue target, that's going to show up in other areas and it's going to help us keep track of various goals that we set for ourselves. So this one, we've set our target as increasing revenue by 50%. There are some things that we can fill out about this, but just wanted to show that as you add things from revenue or expenses or different areas in the workspace, you're going to be able to kind of keep track of your progress towards various goals. But let's head back to revenue because there are a few more views to take a look at. So we have this all time revenue, but over time that's probably going to get a little bit overwhelming. We also have a month by month breakdown. Remember, this is only showing revenue items. You can see some properties highlighted here and you can also see the, t the sum, some total for each month. We can also break down your revenue items by category. So remember, we, we tagged this with a services project. We have some retainer. Maybe there are some other category tags that you want to add yourself that are more specific to your business. You could even do it by uh, specific products or services that you offer. So if you do some branding and you do some design work and you do some strategy work, you could also create tags in the category section for that. And you would be able to see a breakdown based on those categories. You can also break this down by status. So you can see very quickly any, uh, any, um, payments that are, have been requested. And again, you can see the, the schedule or the status of that here with upcoming or overdue. And you can also quickly filter and show or add recurring items. There are two more views here, which is our archive. So anything that's not relevant or that you just want to clear away from your, uh, your view, you can just hit this archive button and it's going to disappear from the main view and show up in your archive. If you want to send it back, you can always just select that checkbox one more time. We also have final view for revenue is a calendar view. If you just wanted to get a monthly overview of when things are coming up and how things are kind of spaced out via calendar. So that is our revenue database. Again, this is just one database. So if you want to see which databases make up this whole template system, you can head over to the map and you'll see there's just three databases. We have our revenue expenses, and targets. The rest is really just views and linked instances and different ways of combining the data that's stored in these single revenue expenses and targets databases. Our expenses page is going to be quite similar to our revenue page. So we have a full list of all expenses. We have a way to quickly identify recurring expenses, which might be more relevant for things like subscriptions in expenses than it is for our revenue. We also have a way to quickly view the status of various payments and we have a calendar view for our expenses. The reason if you're wondering about kind of monthly breakdowns and breaking things down by date, that's going to be more useful using this new monthly report, which we will cover in a moment. I'm just going to go ahead and cover the target section quickly. There is a click through uh, guide here, which is showing you where to click and how to add various properties to a new objective, but I'll just walk you through it since we're here right now. We have a few pre-tagged um, types of goals, and that's because they're going to be pulling in different uh, progress bars. So what do I mean by that? If you have a revenue specific goal or an income specific goal, we can actually use a roll up property to connect any revenue items that we tag here and show a value towards our target. So if I were to just start by adding a new goal, which is let's say, I don't know, 10 K in, so we're in November, let's say 10 K revenue for November. If I can type it. I'm going to leave this current value blank. Now I could just manually do it. And that's what this is for. This is for anything that's not specific to revenue or expenses. I can just give a value here and I can add a target here. So we said the target's 10,000 and this is going to give us a general progress bar, which I will add to this, uh, this template V2. 
view here, but the current progress you can see is 4%, 400 out of 10,000. But we're actually gonna leave this blank because this is a revenue goal and we have this fancy revenue database, so we might as well use the items that we're inputting there. I'm gonna say this is revenue. We can say it's, yeah, okay, just revenue. Achievability, let's say it's likely. We can give it a relevant score. So by the way, these, these, um, these factors or these tags are following the SMART goals framework. So you have specific, which is our target, we're being specific. We're using, we're identifying the metric that we're using. We are listing how achievable we think it is. We're listing how relevant it is to our larger goals. And we want to make it time bound. So this is for November. So naturally, by the end of November, we want to check in on this goal. So this is now uh, how you could create a, any, any goal, any objective in the SMART view but we actually want to tag it with a couple more things to make sure that it's an income specific or revenue goal. So if I click into any objective that I create from this smart table, I can give it a category tag. So with this one, we said we're gonna make it an income goal. And this just means that when I head over to my income goals gallery, it's gonna show up in the right place. And when I tag it with specific, or when I link specific revenue items to this target, then this progress bar is going to update accordingly. So actually I'm gonna head over to my revenue page where I can see the dates that are most relevant. So these November revenue items, I'm just gonna link them to my November revenue goal. So I'm gonna switch this one out or we can leave both in there as well. And now when I head back to my targets page, we should see that this value is updated and it's just rolling up all of the total revenue, which from those two items we selected is 3,300. So same process applies for expenses. We wanna tag these goals as an expenses category goal. Um, and then there are a couple of other views like listing your goals by achievability. And again, we have a target dates property here. So that's our targets section. We also have a, a quick runway calculator if you wanted to use this. So you could just quickly forecast from starting cash in bank, anything that is in the requested payment. So trade receivables, we can list here. We can also list last month's income, last 90 days income. And this is going to give us uh, kind of a, a general runway uh, to help us forecast you know, how many months do we have at this rate? How are we growing, et cetera, et cetera. So this might be just a handy bonus tool for you guys to play around with. Now we can head into monthly reports. Once again, at the top, you'll see there is a click-through tutorial, which is walking through these stages. So if you do forget, you don't need to come back to this video. You can actually just use this uh, click-through guide. But for the monthly report, we're going to have a revenue section and an expenses section. And these are going to be pre-filtered or these are going to be filterable by the month at hand. So this is our November report. So I can just label this correctly so that we know what we're talking about. This is gonna be revenue items for November, 2022. And this is going to be expenses for November, 2022. And again, we have a few views. So we have a list of all of our revenue items and they're going to be filtered for the dates between November 1st, November 30th. Same applies for our expenses table. This is gonna be filtered by November 1st to 30th. And we have a few different views. We have a full list. We have our categories list. Again, this is only showing items for November. So if you wanted to get a quick overview of the sum for your November performance by category, you can do so here. And you can also check on the fulfillment status of your November performance. So how many items were overdue, how many items uh, are still yet to be paid, how many were paid, you can kind of get a quick view of that also. So to create a new report, this is just a demo which is included in the template to help you see what it should look like. But let's say we wanted to create a new monthly report for December. So I just hit, sorry I did that without even saying what I was doing. In this side synced menu, you'll see there's a button called new monthly report. Every time you hit that button, it's gonna generate a fresh new month's report. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this one to be December 2022 report. We can drag this up here and 
Once again, you have this guidance at the top. I'm going to delete this for now. And all we need to do to configure the template is filter to show the dates being December through December. Hold on. Let's cheat like this. So that should be showing December to December. December 1st to December 30th. It's not going to show anything yet because we don't have any items that are listed for those dates. But same thing for expenses. We're just going to update the uh, due dates or the, the due is within these specific dates. Sometimes this is a little bit finicky, but we've got this now so that anything that's due in December is going to show in our monthly report here. Once you have a few of these reports building up, so we can quickly look at our November report by clicking here. We can then click into our December report here. Once you have a few of these, it's going to take up some space in your menu. So there's also a folder here where you can quickly just drag and drop all your monthly reports. And this way, there's already one from October as well. We, we don't create too much clutter, but we keep a, a clear record that's already pre-filtered showing our performance month by month month. So that's the quick tour for this budget and finances template. Hopefully it gave you some ideas for your own setup and how you can use Notion as a bit of a budgeting and finances tracker. Or if you just want to download and use this template system, head over to landmarklabs.co. This is a pro membership template. So sign up for an account, you'll get access to this and our full library of 80 plus Notion for Business templates. See you in the next video.